all of our panelists today. We will now begin a round of five minute questions of our witnesses. I ask all of my colleagues, please click, keep track of your clock. Stay within those five minutes. We do have votes starting at 1130 and we have many members in attendance today. My first question is for the whole panel. We are at a pivotal point in this pandemic, and after weeks of declining rates of cases and deaths, we are now seeing a resurgence of COVID-19, in part due, as you all mentioned, to the circulation of variants. Vaccination rates are plateauing, and COVID fatigue is setting in around the country. So I want to ask each of you, what is the one thing everyone can do to help keep us to re from returning to the early days of this pandemic? Dr. Walensky? Get vaccinated and get your neighbors vaccinated. Dr. Fauci? You know, Dr. Woodcock? Couldn't say it better. <laughs> Ms. O'Connell? Get vaccinated. Thank you to all of you. And I hope everyone heard that. Um, Dr. Fauci, uh, the quick development of effective COVID vaccines has been a real success story during this pandemic. People are getting vaccinated is really key to everyone's ability to return to normal lives. Um, with the spread of variants, as we all talked about, driving and increases in cases and deaths now, I'm encouraged to see public health experts and vaccine developers are now considering the possible need for boosters. You mentioned this a bit in your opening remarks. But I wanted to ask you, how do you assess the duration of vaccine efficacy and the impact of variants um, on that efficacy? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. There are two ways that are actively being used now to assess the answer to your question. One is there are correlates of immunity which have been established. In other words, you have a level of measurable laboratory, for example, neutralizing antibody, which is the easiest to measure. There are also areas of, of immunity that are more difficult to measure, like T-cell responses. But the one that seems to be very well correlated is the antibody level. We know from studies from the clinical trials as well as from animal studies, that there's a baseline level below which you go, you're at much more vulnerable to getting a breakthrough infection. So the first is laboratory data. The second is watching and following cohorts of people to see if you have an increase in breakthrough infections. We know, according to the clinical trial, take for an example, the mRNA, they are 93 to 94% effective in preventing clinically recognizable disease. If you see a fall below that into the 80s or even, unfortunately, hope it never happens, into the 70s, then you know you've reached the point where the durability needs a boost. Those studies are ongoing right now. So we, we don't have any data yet about whether or not we're seeing that? No, we don't. There are some preliminary data that we've heard about from Pfizer, which studies that they did in Israel and in their own studies, which seem to indicate that there is waning immunity. We have a lot of cohorts that we're following. The CDC is following at least 20 cohorts that will be able to amplify on that data and give us much more of a basis of making a decision. Uh, how will the administration determine if booster shots are needed? Just by those very studies, just by the following the cohort studies, and we're waiting, we'll be, maybe perhaps Dr. Walensky would like to comment, because she has in her domain of the CDC a number of cohort studies that will inform us. In the meantime, we at NIH are doing studies now to determine when you give a booster, how high up do you get it, and what kind of a cushion do you get for antibody responses. Okay, and Dr. Walensky? Yeah, thank you, um, Senator. The, we have numerous cohort studies. They represent tens of thousands of people, and they're represented across the United States. These include data from 14,000 nursing home facilities, long-term care facilities. We have a HEROES cohort that is essential workers of over 5,000 people that are actually getting weekly PCR testing. We have um, healthcare worker cohorts. We have cohorts across the country where we're following these data and really looking at it every several weeks to understand what the vaccine efficacy is, and it is among that and the laboratory data will be the, the decisions that we use. Fortunately, we're anticipating that this will wane and not plummet. So we, as we see that waning, we, that will be our time for action. Okay. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. We'll stay in touch on that. I will reserve the balance of my time. There's many members here. Senator Burr. Thank you, thank you Madam Chairman. I, got, 